Yeah. All right. Okay, so the next unit, guys. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're ready, again, we do have to move with reasonable alacrity. That means purposeful quickness. Uh, the next unit is inorganic nomenclature. And specifically, it's naming compounds and building compounds from their names. So inorganic nomenclature is naming compounds or building compounds from their names. And uh, inorganic is the study of chemicals that we study in this class. This is an inorganic class. Um, inorganic compounds are the ones that aren't made primarily of carbon. They're everything else. And then nomenclature literally just means naming system. So you've already been exposed to the naming system in the concept crossword, the binary crossword. So you have a pretty good idea what we're talking about. So um, just like the English word for name is name, and the German word is nomen, and the Spanish word is nombre, um, so this is inorganic naming stuff, inorganic naming, naming system. So we're going to learn how to name compounds, and then we're going to learn how to form compounds. At the basis of inorganic nomenclature is the idea of oxidation. Okay. So let's just do a quick review about what the oxidation charge is of our common elements. Group 1, follow the little green dot to the board. Group 1 has a charge of what? Plus 1. Plus 1. Group 2? Plus 2. Plus two. Group 13? Plus group 14? Plus group 15? Ah, yes, plus 4, minus 4. Group 15, minus 3. Group 16? Group 17? And then our noble gases? Good. So. Um, yeah, plus one, minus, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, and zero. Great. And we've skipped over the D block because I told you they are multivalent. They can have a charge anywhere from plus one to plus seven. And today, we're going to learn how to talk about what their charge actually is in a compound. Okay, so binary compounds are the simplest type of compounds. They're composed of one positive thing and one negative thing. And that's primarily what we're going to focus on in this class. One positive thing, one negative thing. One cation, one anion. Binary means two, two things. One plus, one minus. And here are four binary compounds. We remind ourselves that when we're doing binary compounds, we're naming things in the binary system, we place the cation in the front position and the anion in the back position. The cation is our positive ion, and we're going to put that in the front. The anion is our negative ion, and we're going to place that in the back. So, what is this compound? Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Did you see what you did? You didn't call it sodium chlorine. You called it sodium chloride because that's what's printed on the box at the grocery store. And so we've always used for the last 10, 12 weeks is we call it sodium chloride. We don't call it sodium chlorine. This is sodium chloride. What is this? Lithium Just like in your crossword, this is lithium bromide. Not bromine, bromide. So when an anion like chlorine or bromine forms a compound, their last syllable gets replaced with ide. Chlorine becomes chloride. Oxygen becomes oxide. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Nitrogen becomes nitride, and so on. We'll talk about those in a second. This is what? Magnesium dichloride. Magnesium chloride. I know. If you found out on the, the cross, if you found where you're doing the binary crossword that there was lots of dyes and tries in there, Sometimes we use them, but usually not. We only use them in a very specific circumstance. And we don't use them when we have a metal and a non-metal. So this is just meh, meh. Magnesium, oxide. magnesium oxide. Now when we assign the oxidation numbers to these things, we notice something pretty profound. Sodium is plus one. Chlorine is minus one. Plus one and minus one, when added together, will normally equal zero. zero. Lithium is plus one. Bromine is minus one. Added together, they are zero. zero. Magnesium is plus two. Chlorine is minus one each. A plus two plus two minus ones equals zero. zero. 
Magnesium is plus two, and oxygen is what? Minus two. Minus two. Added together equals zero. zero. And when we're forming compounds or reading compounds, we have to remember rule number one. The <clears throat> are you ready? Okay. Rule number one: the actual ox the overall oxidation of our cation and an anion must be zero. Compounds are not ions. Compounds are things that exist that we can hold. We can hold sodium chloride in our hands. They're not ions. We can't hold ions in our hands. So sodium chloride must balance out to zero. We can hold lithium bromide in our hands. It's going to equal zero. We can hold magnesium oxide in our hand. It will equal zero. Compounds will equal zero. Capiche? OK. So there you go. You've pretty much learned about one third of all of inorganic nomenclature in 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. It's just inorganic nomenclature is all about learning the rules and then applying the rules. It's just like reading. Okay. It's just learning the rules and applying the rules. Okay. So nothing for you to write on nothing for you to write on this slide, but let's just review ourselves so we can remind ourselves what things we change and what things we don't. So let's follow the little green dot once again to the periodic table. Here's our metals. Oop, there we go. Here's our metals. Here's some more metals. And here's our nonmetals. Our nonmetals are, are you ready? Yeah. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and less so, acetine, tellurium, selenium, and of course there's phosphorus. Okay. So there's our nonmetals. Not a lot of nonmetals. Magnesium. Is magnesium a metal or a nonmetal? Non it's a metal. Will it change its name? No. We used to, before social justice, I used to say that metals are kind of like males. They don't change their name when they get hooked up with nonmetals, which are kind of like females. Females change their name, males don't. So metals don't change their name, nonmetals do. Like metal, male, nonmetal. Non male or female. You get the idea. But then social justice came along and it's like, we're just both going to change our name to Moon Children. And you're like, okay, whatever. Question? In where? Oh. Hmm. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Okay, so iron. Guys, back to work. Iron, metal or non-metal? Metal. Change its name? No. No. Fluorine? Non-metal. Change its name? Yes. Yes. Sulfur? Non-metal. Change name? Yes. Yes. Okay. So sodium, metal, don't change its name. Chlorine, non-metal? Change its name. Manganese, metal, don't change the name. Calcium, metal? Yes, but it's all white. No, calcium's a metal. Calcium's a metal, don't change the name. Aluminum, metal, don't change the name. Nitrogen, change the name. Oxygen, change. Chromium, don't change. Bromine, change. No, bromine's a non-metal. It's, it's hanging out between chlorine and iodine. Change the name. Zinc, no change. Carbon, carbon's special. Remember, carbon can be plus four or minus four. If carbon is plus four, that means it's acting in the metal position, don't change its name. If carbon is minus four, it's acting in the negative position, change its name. Okay? So you might have carbon tetrachloride, or you might have silicon chloride. So when it's in the negative position, we change its name. Oh, thank you. Ever get a chance to sign except for web? Yep, okay, good. Cobalt. No. Don't change it. Silver. No. Don't change it. Boron. Act it, boron's going to act like a metal and we're not going to change it. Lead. Don't change it. Potassium. Don't change it. Question. All the metalloids. Yeah. Um, we're going to try to avoid the metalloids like arsenic, germanium, antimony. Um, we're going to try to avoid them, but they will pop up in, your, in real life, in IRL. In IRL. Okay, again, nothing to write here. This is magnesium and chlorine. I, 
Exactly. This is going to become, I left this slide on here for, for um, students and teachers who don't know what they're talking about, but you guys already know what we're talking about. You've already learned this. That magnesium chlorine is going to become magnesium and the chlorine is going to become chloride. Okay. Okay. Excellent question, which I'll answer once the crowd is quiet. The question was, how do you know when to add the ide? And here's the great answer. You always do to a nonmetal. Okay? Nonmetals, when they become compounds, they always change their last syllable or syllables. I'll show you that in a second. Okay? So magnesium and chlorine are magnesium metal and chlorine gas. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we need chlorine gas. Um, so magnesium all by itself, hey, it's magnesium, and chlorine gas, chlorine gas. You put them together, and it's magnesium chloride. It doesn't behave like either of them. It's a compound. So when nonmetals become compounds, their anion changes its name. Cool? All right. I'm going to let you write these down at the conclusion of this slide. So just focus on up here. Is everybody focusing? Yeah, so focus on the whiteboard, not on your crotch. I know that phone's really interesting. OK. So here's the common anions. I think I hit them all. I think I got them all. Um, oxygen becomes, take a guess. Oxide. Hydrogen. Hydride. Hydride. When you have an ogen, you get rid of the whole ogen. Like nitrogen and hydrogen, you get rid of the whole ogen. So hydrogen becomes hydride. Sulfur becomes sulfide. Chlorine becomes chloride. Fluorine becomes fluoride. Iodine becomes iodide. That's a fun one. Nitrogen becomes nitride. nitride. Carbon becomes carbide. carbide. Bromine becomes bromide. And this is my favorite. Phosphorus becomes phosphide. OK, now you can write them down if you'd like. Yes? The ite is a polyatomic. And we'll do polyatomics tomorrow. Yeah. So there's eights, and there's ites, and there's hypoites, and there's hyper, there's just a whole mess of stuff. Eights and ites and ipos. Those will all be things we'll talk about tomorrow. Gesundheit. Gesundheit. Be in full health. God bless you with full health. So I take it from the uh, the chatter that you're pretty much ready to move on. Okay. One more minute. I know it's phosphide. I I have the worst projector in the world. There's besides doing just black and white. There's Maybe I'll work on something. No, because you really should have put green over green base colors. When I when I originally designed these PowerPoints, I had an awesome projector. And now I got this this piece of junk and doesn't do colors very well. 
I've asked for one, but they Brain. keep giving me broken ones. Just like you wrote. Been there. Just like use a rocket. Just like right below it and say, I didn't know it was I'll keep that in mind. Okay, moving on. Guys, so we have finished the first rule of inorganic nomenclature. And that is you have a metal and a non-metal, and when they react together, the non-metal changes its name. Pretty simple so far. Next, when you have non-metal atoms, the rules get a little different. We still use the old system of Latin prefixes, but only when we have non-metal atoms. What do I mean by non-metal? The little triangle right there, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and bromine, and sometimes selenium and iodine. Okay, so when you have non-metal atoms, then you use the prefix. Now this is a compound that you've all seen before. Yes. What is that? Carbon dioxide. Notice what you did? You guys said carbon dioxide. Um, what's that? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. It would be. Yep. So when both elements are non-metals, then we use our di-tri. And this is the only time we use the di-tri. So, carbon monoxide has a mono-oxygen. mono y mono, one on one. Okay. Carbon dioxide has two oxygens. Hey, would you like to ride your dicycle around with me? <laughs> it could, but we chose to go with the Latin prefix, it's not the Greek. And then boron trifluoride. No thanks, I'm going to ride my tricycle. That's mm -hmm. And how many lines do you need to make a tetra? Carbon tetra chloride. Dun 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 Yeah, good old Latin. Uh-huh. Sure. So if both of your uh, compounds are non-metals, or both your elements are non-metals, you have to say, this is how many I have. Because the plus minus thing doesn't work anymore. Okay. So carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are two very valid compounds. You can't use the plus minus anymore because they're non-metals and they bond covalently. They don't bond ionically. Okay, who knows what five would be? Take a wild guess. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, wait, hold on, Penta. Penta, what would be six? You hate hexa. Hexa, septa, octa. It's just like the, it's just like the geometry. Hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, decagon. So five is penta, like the pentagon. Six is hexa, like a hexagon. Seven is hepta, like a heptagon. Eight is octa, like an octagon. And nine is nona, like a nonagon. And 10 is deca, like December plus two months. Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. That's okay. Profanity means at least you understand you don't you don't understand the material. <laughs> you don't understand material? Yeah, because you swear you're like, oh crap, this is really hard. Then you at least like, you know that you don't under, you know you don't understand it. Hey, you guys want to hear some fun trivia? Yeah. yeah. Um, sept is the Greek letter for seven, not hept. It's sept. September is the ninth month. October is the tenth month. November. Yeah. Yeah. So so Caesar Augustus added two months in the summer. So that's why the the tenth month is called eight, and the twelfth month is called ten, and the eleventh month is called nine. Why didn't they add him at the end? Because he was just he was just doing his thing. Power tripping. Probably because yeah, probably because those were the best months. Yeah. So the one, like the one in I am, the way that literally applies to the second non-metal, 
No. Okay, guys. Guys. Haley asked a good question. Does the prefix only um, does the prefix only apply? to uh, the second thing, and no, it does apply to the front thing as long as the front thing is not a one. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, are you ready to do practice? Somewhat? Yes. Me? Me? Practice. Okay, so these four you've already done. That's right, boron trifluoride. This one. This is di phosphorus di phosphorus penta oxide. Oops, don't show. Now, again, this can be written di phosphorus pent oxide or di phosphorus penta oxide. Okay? This is diphosphorus pentaoxide or diphosphorus pentoxide. When a prefix has two syllables, that second syllable sometimes gets chopped off. Nobody in this room cares. Okay. So if you wouldn't mind, guys, for the next seven elements, please name those. Use a system you've learned and name those next seven elements. Water. On your paper. <laughs> With the system we have. Haven't you seen those jokes on the internet? It's like, dihydrogen monoxide, man. Watch out for it. You breathe it in, it's going to kill you. When it's in the gaseous form, it's, it helps you, helps you not snore in the ni at night. I constantly produce dihydrogen monoxide in my in my room, so my wife doesn't snore as much. Oh, you mean the purifier? Humidifier, but yeah. I don't know. Well, listen, they're called different things. Shut up. Dad, you're the boss is live. Stop fighting, children. Listen. No. You have to call it dihydrogen monoxide from now on. So when you're like, I am so thirsty, I need some dihydrogen monoxide. So this, this, this monoxide, that only applies to the second one. So you don't have to put it on like the NO2, you don't have to put mononitrogen. Correct. Yeah. So Kaylee had a good point. Callie. Callie had a good point. Twice. <laughs> Callie had a good point that uh, Um, Cal I had a good point that uh, you never start a mono, you never start a chemical with a mono. So this is not mono nitrogen dioxide, it's just nitrogen monoxide. A, a G? No. There's gallium and germanium, but no just G by itself. No E by itself. Okay, well, you invent a time machine, you go back in time, and you can, uh, you can, you can discover the chemicals and name them whatever you want. Yes. So Kelly's going to invent a... Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, that's another point, guys. 
you are learning the basic system for nomenclature. When you look at chemicals on like your, uh, your drug bottles, they have crazy names that people just make up. Those names don't match this system. They just make them up. Okay, just like, um, just like an animal has a Latin name and you're like, dolphin. Um, <laughs> so, um, so the chemicals that you see on like vitamins and your, your protein shakes, those are chemical names that are just made up by wh whoever sold it to you. Okay, those don't fit the system. Why? Because the chemical names are really, really long. So, like we have, you're like Canis lupus, wolf, you know, so. Okay, next. Okay, any questions about this before we move on? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, do you have a question? Okay, guys, I, I want to hear the question, but I couldn't hear it because there's too much chatter. Again? Yeah, only for the second. Um, for the first.